Hi, Miss Beck. Hey, it's Miss Cappuccini, and we are ready for week three of logo design. Mm. Woo! <laughs> Hey, sixth grade, it's Miss Cappuccini. We are going to continue our logo lesson today with lesson 6.15, logo feedback, revision, and reflection. Part one, connection to advertising. Did you know? We're gonna zoom out. We've been looking really closely at the idea of logo design, but when we zoom out, logo design is a part of graphic design. Graphic design is an important part of advertising. Lots of artistic careers exist within advertising and there are also lots of design-based careers. So let's take a look at some of those. Here we go. Which graphic design career suits you? Now this is something that you can go back and look at more closely if you're really interested in knowing about all of these different things. But um, there's a lot of different types of graphic design careers. You could be a print designer, an animator, you, um, a, there's also, so this is like an entry level print designer, there's a mid level print designer, a senior level print designer, you could be a commercial artist, a logo designer, look at this, logo designer, it's an entry level job, and this you can see here's the key, right? There is what level is it, what education do you need, what's the salary and experience. While we're looking at an entry level job for logo designer, you do need a degree in design plus a portfolio, which would be examples of the work you have done in the past. Your experience that you need varies based on the job. And an average salary for a graphic designer is $52,000 a year. Um, packaging designer, think of those beautiful boxes that Apple products come in or the way that they package toys or anything that package needs not only a structural design but also a visual a graphic design the elements that make it appealing to those of us that buy those objects um, print marketing designer print publication designer and then art or creative director and you can see um, there's a range of salaries this lowest annual salary among these is thirty six thousand dollars a year going all the way up to as much as hundred and seventy seven thousand dollars a year so um, this is just a really nice overview of different design related careers. Did you know advertisers seek feedback all the time? So right now we're thinking about our logo designs and we're, we're connecting that to the idea of feedback and within the advertising world um, they do things uh, such as focus groups, surveys and other ways of getting feedback and the feedback in advertising helps advertisers and designers make their message more clear and effective. Advertising is a multi-billion dollar industry and so an airtime is not cheap. You guys may have heard that um, to do like a 30 second commercial on the Super Bowl is some insane amount like a million dollars. I can't remember. We'll have to maybe look that up before, um, before we have class so we can see. But it's really, really expensive. Um, depending on where you're putting your advertising and so for it to be clear and efficient and get the message across as best as possible makes a lot of sense for those who are spending the money and um, this is a funny you may have seen this this is the Flocus group you know Flo the progressive lady and this is sort of just like a joke commercial um, the premise is pretty accurate that in focus groups a lot of times they'll show something on a television or share products with a group of people and then the person that hosts the focus group asks a lot of questions and they're getting feedback so let's watch old Flo here at work that's how a home and auto bundle is made <laughs> So, what are some key takeaways from this commercial? Did any of you hear the bundle your home and auto part? I like that, just not when it comes out of her mouth. Yeah, as a mother, I wouldn't want my kids to see that. Good mom. To see, wait, I'm sorry, what? Don't kids see enough violence as it is? I've seen violence. Maybe you could turn the word bundle into a character, oh, like Mr. Yeah. Bundles. The top of the bundle, do you? My kids would love that. Yeah. Ah, silly. So, it's it's definitely obviously it's a joke but it does give you an idea of what a focus group would look like Flo has definitely lost control of that focus group feedback is a part of the creative process and so that's something that we're going to engage in today did you know that advertisers revise and refine their work based on that feedback 
but not all feedback is useful. Check out this comic. You got um, the designer working on the device here, and this person is perhaps their boss or the account uh, manager or whatever. And he says, yes, yes, that's good, Templeton. Excellent design, but I wonder if we can't make it pop more. And Templeton says, like, make it bigger? And the boss man says, well, no, not bigger per se. It just needs to sing, you know? And Templeton says, okay, so brighter? No, not brighter. It's got a zing. It's got a zap. Make it zazzle. Those aren't real words. With a bang, then a pow, and a whoop, whoop, skidoo. So the point of this, besides to have a little fun, is that um, unhelpful feedback. It's nice. I like it. So when we're giving feedback, you know, making up words, not being clear about what we mean. When we give feedback, it's most helpful if it's specific and if it's directly directly connected to what we are looking at. So why do we do feedback? Why do we engage in a feedback cycle? Feedback helps us grow. Zoom out again, there's uh, Patrick. You know when you look through the binoculars the wrong way, everything looks actually really far away. Zoom out. In the bigger picture, another benefit of feedback is that it helps us grow. Think of all the different ways we receive feedback, and not just at school, but when we're thinking about school, we get feedback in math, in language arts, in music, in PE, and sometimes it's um, you know, a score that you got on a test, or um, you spell the word wrong, or you spell the word right, but even something like if you're in music, if you are playing music on an instrument, you play your notes, you hear them, and you say, oh yes, that sounds correct, that's feedback. And then when you play that wrong note, you forgot a sharp or you forgot a flat, and then you go, ooh, it sounds incorrect. So feedback comes to us all throughout the day in a lot of different forms. Or I think in gym class, you're making, shooting a free throw, and it goes in. That's feedback on the form of your shot, it works. Or if it goes out or you airball it, that's also feedback on let's try something different next time. So feedback sounds like a big deal, uh, but we're actually getting and giving feedback all the time without even really realizing it. How would you describe the feedback your art teacher gives you on your seesaw posts, on your artwork, or when we were in the building together, or when they talk to you specifically about your artwork in class? That is the kind of feedback you know, we've been modeling feedback for you all of these years. Um, what kind of things do they comment on? What kind of words do they use? How do they describe your artwork or the product that you have made? Or if you're in process, you know, what kind of feedback do they give you in the middle stages of making an artwork? We can think about feedback and how it compares to criticism. So a lot of times we think of criticism Criticism definitely has a negative feeling to it, right? And this quote kind of summarizes that Frank Sonneberg. Feedback, he says, feedback is helpful and constructive. Criticism is hurtful and damaging. So it's really important that we make the distinction that feedback is helpful. Feedback is constructive. Feedback is positive, and that's what we're looking for today. Glows and grows. You may have heard this in another class. But I think it um, sums it up pretty well. Glow is the celebration. Feedback is about celebration. That is the glow. And it's about growth for anybody, for, for young people, for adults, okay? And the grow, obviously, is the grow. And I like this. I looked for a lot of different um, symbols of growth here. What, and a lot of them had flowers. And I, those are fine, but I really like the idea of having fruit here because flowers are pretty and they're nice, but they don't last forever. But fruit is something that is nourishing. It um, feeds your body. It helps, it actually helps you grow. So I like this idea of when we are growing, um, you know, we're ending up with something that is a useful and more long term result. When giving feedback or thinking about receiving it, remember this purpose. It is to celebrate and it is to grow. That is why we are giving the feedback. We grow when we receive feedback. We must analyze or look at our own work differently to see another person's point of view. We must evaluate the feedback and determine if we want to take that feedback and use it to revise and refine our work or not. Just because you get feedback from someone doesn't mean you have to apply that feedback and make those changes. 
We grow when we give feedback too. When we're the giver of the feedback, we must look closely and use higher level thinking skills such as analyzing and evaluating. So both giving and receiving feedback are higher level thinking skills. Now, just to mention this briefly, there is um, such a thing as formal art criticism. Describe, tell what you see, what is the art made of? You analyze it, you interpret it, and you judge it. And sometimes this can have more of a negative spin on it because you part of judging is determining if the artwork is successful. But that's not what we're doing here. This is for looking at a completed work of art and more often like a museum quality finished piece of art. Okay, we today are looking at in progress artworks, so it doesn't make any sense to do formal art criticism. Uh, but just generally so you've known, have heard of it before, this is what uh, formal art criticism is based on. Hey, we're going to do a studio visit. I'm so excited to share with you. Um, you may, if you know me and have been in the classroom with me before, you may know that I am a working artist. I am a painter and I am always trying to grow as an artist. You're going to come into my studio and learn a little bit about the ways in which I have received feedback as a painter. Hope you enjoy the studio visit. Hey sixth graders, it's Miss Cappuccini. I'm coming to you from my basement art studio. Let me give you a really quick tour and then I'll show you why I've brought you to my studio today and how it connects with your lesson on feedback. My art studio is in my basement, which is not the greatest place for an art studio. There is no natural light down here. Um, I actually spend quite a lot of time painting outdoors and you can see here down next to this chair is one of my easels I take outside. And over here is another one of my easels that I take outside. I really like to paint outside landscapes. Um, I also have been working on some abstract paintings. I have my drying rack there, similar to the drying rack you have in your room at school. There's a really old painting I did um, right after 9-11. I don't really do much with that, but it's an important reminder of that time and my feeling at that time. Lots of paintings, lots of paintings that I've painted, boxes and boxes and shelves and racks of paintings, books that are inspiring. Um, but why I've brought you down today for this lesson is in this box right here. Let me pull it off and we'll take a look inside. All right, so inside this box are more paintings, many more paintings. But the reason the paintings that I wanna pull out today are these paintings that I've done on paper. And they were part of a class or a workshop that I took this summer um, with a painter named Camille Perswodek, who's a master painter. She's a colorist. Um, she's well known for the way that she uses color in her painting. And I took her workshop, which consisted of me setting up a still life and painting it to the best of my ability, according to the color principles that she is teaching. And then I would have 20 minutes every Monday afternoon where she would look at my paintings and give me feedback. And so the point of sharing this with you today, this is the painting I actually spent the most amount of time on, like three weeks, I think, I worked on that painting. The reason for sharing this with you today is to show you that working artists do use feedback and they do take notes. So you might be like, oh, why do I have to write down what somebody else says about my painting? Look, this is the first version of this painting that I did, that I shared with Camille. And what she does is she would digitally paint over it and explain things and look at all these notes that I took. Every week, I took notes on my feedback from Camille. And this, oh look, how, how convenient. There's the second version. So here she shows, this is the photo setup. This was my first painting. This was my second painting. And this is her digital painting where she tried to show me how to show light even better. All of these notes that I took, first of all, helped me when I went back the next week to work on it some more to remember what did she say and, and how can I apply that to my painting. And it also, when you hear something, that's one way of learning. And when you write it down, you have to process it in your brain and you're more likely to remember it in the future going forward without even having to look at your notes. So there's a couple of reasons that are really important to take and make feedback. I just want to show from a working artist, a professional artist standpoint, that feedback is important and taking notes on feedback is important as well. Thanks for coming by my studio. So here we are to the here and now, feedback on logo designs, part three. You're gonna be working in pairs. 
you are going to be giving each other feedback on your logo designs. And you can think of this as peer review if you've done that with writing in ELA or any other class where you're working with a partner to kind of look at each other's work and give feedback um, to help glow and grow, to help celebrate and promote growth in your work. So we are going to be explaining. We're going to do this in breakout rooms. So up next, we're going to learn about how it's going to work, what the Seesaw template looks like, um, and what you can expect for today. Okay, Ms. Becca, are you ready to do feedback with your logo first? Absolutely. Let me just upload my picture of my favorite one that I want you to take a look at today. Okay. All right. So when I'm thinking about giving feedback, I want to think about being constructive and positive. And I want to also think about connecting directly to what I see. Just like when I give evidence from a text when I'm reading, I want to also back up what I'm saying when I look at your artwork with things that I see in your artwork. So first I have a compliment, the bun, top bun. My top bun compliment for you is that I like the unique shape you chose for your logo. Um, and I would not have thought to do the internal organ, the brain uh, for that. Tell me again. I Sorry, my pancake is um, has some critique on my logo too, apparently. Yeah, get those pets involved. Okay, <laughs> right. my pancake is the name. Aw. <laughs> What's the name of the type of picture? Retinoblastoma. Yeah. So I like that you made the connection to the internal anatomy. Okay, so now for the meat, or as I said, vegetarians get the cheese and veggies in there. Um, my constructive feedback. Um, so, oh, one thing I was wondering, since I was just asking about what type of cancer it was, is if maybe you would include some words or maybe abbreviations to give a little bit more information about what the what the logo represents. Just more than a picture. And since we're just taking notes, we aren't worried about spelling or grammar or punctuation, just as long as we, the note takers, can read those notes later and know what we want to remind ourselves of. Okay. One more compliment, that bottom bun. Um, oh, I, this is a detail that I noticed as I was looking at more closely at your logo. And I really like how in the middle of the logo, the wrinkles of the brain, I guess you would call them, it almost looks like a little happy face. Oh. So positive feeling to it. I didn't notice that when I first made it. Um, that's cool. And that's one thing too, when we give and get feedback, we can look at things differently when others observe our art and tell us what they see, which is cool. I agree. Yeah, completely. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't have noticed that unless you had pointed it out because you look at your art so much that, you know, you think you see everything there, but outside voice, you know? Yeah. Great job, Miss Beck. I really like what you have going. Thank you. I appreciate the, the feedback. You're welcome. So um, since we're in the middle of class, right, we have to return to do some sketching based on the feedback we got. So up here in the top corner, you'll get a little orange draft button. Make sure you tap that draft so that you can go and change anything for your logo today. And then on page two, that's where you're going to submit your final design. So you'll save it for later, come back and fill out this prompt question. At the end of class today, return to your activity 6.15 and you are going to fill out slide two. Right here, you're going to upload a picture of your, photo, of your final pencil sketch with whatever changes you might have made during feedback time. And you are also going to answer one of these two prompts. So one helpful comment I received was blank. One change I might make is blank. So one helpful comment I received from Ms. Cappuccini, those two, you know, the brain and the eye definitely show the connection, but how do you know it's a retinoblastoma? Once you have answered those two things, uh, make sure you tap that green check for approval. 